Good evening, everyone. Our opening song for this evening mass is number 446, 446, Amazing Grace. We will sing the first two verses. Please stand to begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We already now celebrate the 31st weekend in ordinary time. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins, that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would have not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it? Or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls. For your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore you rebuke offenders little by little. Warn them and remind them of the sins that they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever. and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King. give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faith ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him in accordance with the grace of our God 
and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter alleging from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there lived named Zacchaeus, who was the chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have exhorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. I've been at this parish now a little over three years, and what I have discovered is that it is a very generous and giving parish. And so every year or so, we decide to, as a finance council, we decide to come together and give you a state of the parish report so that you may know where your dollars are going and what we're up to as far as the finance council. So I would invite a member of our council to come forward this evening and give us the state of the parish. Thank you, Father Jerry. We appreciate you uh, letting us have this time to give this update. I'm Marcia Yockham, and I am a member of the Finance Council. Uh, Along with uh, a group of other people, we have Lacey Bender as our chair. Lacey has done a tremendous amount of work over the last few years, uh, working with Beth, working with Father, working with uh, Deacon Dan, and now Glenn Smith, uh, to make sure that our finances are in order and things are are running well. We're blessed to have Father Jerry uh, as our pastor and Teresa Brendis as our principal. Glenn Smith is director of operations. Beth Hebler is our business manager. Uh, Mark Ambrose is also on our committee, and then Nate Monroe and myself make up the committee. 
So some of the things I want to go over this evening are different uh, things that are listed here, and I'm not going to read all these to you so you won't be here all night because I know you have other, other commitments this evening. But I do want to talk about our fundraiser that we have. Uh, so if we could go to that next slide. Uh, we just finished our annual fall festival, which is always a, a, a tremendous fundraiser for us here at Resurrection. Deb Mitchell and team and so many people here uh, put in a lot of time and effort in this. And I'm really pleased to say that this year our gross revenue was over 101,000 and our net profit was over 77,000. So you can see what we did prior year, what we did last year and what we did this year with that. So we had a, a really nice increase there. It was our highest gross ever, I believe. Um, we made some capital improvements with the, the tilt skillet, I think they call it, to make dumplings quicker and some different things so in the um, old boiler room so that we could make the kuchens a little bit quicker and they were flying out of here and they were delicious. So that was a great year for the fall festival. We also had a large fundraiser earlier this year uh, with the dueling pianos. Uh, we grossed over 33,000 and we netted uh, almost 20,000 on that. So Jamie Schiff and her team did a great job with that. Um, we currently have the CPC, the Catholic Parishes campaign going now. Um, if you haven't picked up your envelopes, I believe they're being mailed. Um, we've received a few of those back arrays. We have about 22% of those back. Our parish assessment was $191,000 this year, and the diocese um, measures that based on the number of families and people that are going to our parish. So that's a large dollar amount that we have to uh, try to collect here. Uh, we do have pledges of about 55,000 so far, so we have a, a large balance there still remaining. Kind of our goal, if, if you divide it out, is that each family would give about $450 on average we know that some can't afford that much and so we look for the generosity of uh, others to maybe donate a little bit uh, greater amount uh, we do ask that you you just prayerfully consider what you could donate to this because there's so much that comes back from our diocese to our parish and our parishioners here um, you know one example we talked about this week was the program that both deacon ed and, and deacon dan went through was probably about the cost of about eighty thousand dollars and that was covered by the diocese that's covered by this campaign so we're really blessed to have two really good deacons here, and uh, we're blessed that they were able to go through that program uh, with the help of the diocese. If you don't have a card and you need to get one, let us know. Uh, you can either return that pledge card or you can go to uh, the website here and make your donation online. Of course, the school is a very important part of our budget and something that we look at each year. Uh, we have 336 students this year enrolled, which is an increase of 16 students. And we estimate it costs about $7,200 a student to educate uh, each student that we have here. So the tuition covers about 65% of the cost, and we rely on the generous donations of our parishioners to, to pick up the balance of that. Over the last few years, the vouchers have been available, uh, which is uh, state funding. And then about 204 of our students uh, are on vouchers, and nine are right now on the, the, um, the SGOs, the grants that are out there. Vouchers are, the payout of vouchers is a little bit different than someone donating every week or collecting the tuition ahead of time. The vouchers are paid out either late October, early November, about half of that dollar amount, then 40% in March, and then 10% in May. So you can see it's not, for a high school, it's not a great uh, position. It's nice to get that money, but we have to have some regular income come in each week to make sure that we can, we can pay our bills and, and uh, you know, utilities and things like that. The emergency assistance to non-public schools was something that became available uh, after COVID. We call it the EANS uh, grant. So the first time that came around, we collected 284,000 for that. And it was used for things like the extra supplies for cleaning costs, uh, to sanitize the school and the, the, the you know, everything that was um, the touch services. We also purchased a floor scrubber. Uh, we we uh, had extra costs with counselors. Uh, we purchased a Promethean board for every classroom, and we had new math textbooks, and we also had some online education programs because a lot of the time our students were learning online when the schools were, were uh, unable to be opened. We did not qualify for EANS Grant II um, based on our poverty, poverty level, but there was some excess funds available from EANS Grant I, and we received about $190,000 on that. And so with that additional funding, we were able to buy a copier for the school, which was desperately needed, and also pay for those fees. 
we purchased new books for just over 55,000 and then also the Chromebooks, which is a cost of about 52,000. And then we needed carts for those obviously for the classrooms. And then again, um, the youth first social worker that is at our school, that the counseling's available for our students. Uh, if you're not familiar with Youth First, you should be because it's a very good uh, program here in the community and a, a just a, something to really also support. Uh, then we also needed some supplemental educational support uh, for our teachers and staff and then students that maybe had fallen behind during co uh, the time of COVID. Some of the projects that we've completed this year, we're really proud of those. We have the walk-in coolers uh, in the school cafeteria. We've done some beautiful landscaping. Thank you, Wilderman. Uh, and then the gym bleachers, many of you helped with that, taking out the old bleachers and installing the new. Uh, here in the church, we had the steeple painting, we had the HVHC unit replaced, and then the Realm platform. If you don't have that Realm app, um, you should. It should be on your phone. It's just an easy way for us to communicate with you and, and for you to, to, to learn what's going on here at Resurrection. And if you have any questions on it ever, let us know. We're, we're happy to help. Some projects that we have that we're looking out to the future. And I don't know if you can see kind of the reds and the greens, but the reds are the needs. We absolutely should have these. And then the wishes that we have there. So for here in the church, one of the wishes is a cry room. I absolutely love seeing so many young families here and the, the, the young children that come to our masses. I know it's hard as a parent sometimes to keep them controlled and you want to go someplace different and you don't always hear when you're in back of the church. So we're looking, looking at different opportunities for a cry room here. But please don't feel like you have to um, stay home or, or keep your kids at home. We love having them here at the parish. We'd also love to have an elevator so that when we have funeral masses and things where we want to go down to the cafeteria, that we, we're, it's accessible for everyone. When you're on two different levels, it's really difficult for those that are uh, wheelchair bound to, to, to make it up and down. So those are, uh, well, the new signage also for the church and for the, the um, parish grounds. If you're new here, you don't always know where the parish office is and things like that. So we're looking for different signages too that would help us. And then for the, the absolute needs that we have, we know the school HVHC system is old and we're in the process of replacing some of that. Uh, the cost in that is still 128,000. The roof replacement for here in the church, uh, we have some estimated costs there. And then I've been on finance council for I guess four or five years and every year we talk about our septic system which is the most fun and, and shiny thing to talk about. Um, but it's a very expensive um, process. And we're looking at different things that are available there. So we, we did some fixes a couple years ago, um, but with the you know, large amount of students and people we have here on campus, we wanna make sure our septic system is, is working and, and uh, fully functional. Uh, week, weekly giving targets with our new budget this year. Um, Father and his staff have done just a fantastic job with inflation being the way it is to hold their costs down. And we really looked at the budget this year and really tried to uh, keep in mind that you're, you're dealing with those inflation costs in your household too. So current weekly average of, of collection so far this year, it's been about $22,000 per week and our budget is 24 to. Uh, so we're at a little bit of a shortfall. We're not terribly concerned about that because uh, July and August tend to be the time when people are on vacation, maybe not donating as strongly. November, December, we typically pick that back up. Um, uh, something giving is online has been something that's been real important uh, the last few years. 35% of the folks giving are giving online right now. That's up from 11%, so it's really becoming the trend. The Realm app, app has helped that. So if you don't have that and you wanna give online, the Realm app is really easy and you can kind of follow what your uh, uh, donations have been. If you have any questions on Realm or donating online, uh, Beth can answer those or, or a father can help you out. We're always happy to help you with that. So our financials, and you love seeing all the numbers I know. Uh, 2021, we had budget um, 3.1, just over 3.1 million and we came in at 1.5 uh, million, I'm sorry, 3.15 million on uh, income. So we were, we were at a loss of just 21,000. So we hit it really, really close. We hit our budget extremely close. And if we go into this next year, we just increased it just slightly what we had to for inflation. And again, controlling those costs. 
and that's where we came up with the, the, the number that, of dollar amount that we needed uh, for the weekly collections. And then on the last slide, what can we do as a parishioner? Uh, we really encourage you to rise up and engage in the parish ministries. If you're not involved in any parish ministries and you'd like to be, uh, you know, see one of us, see myself, see Deacon Dan, Deacon Ed, uh, Father, we're always happy to help. Um, there's all kinds of uh, new programs that are being brought out here at Resurrection that are kind of exciting. We were kind of, had a couple years there with COVID that we couldn't do a lot, and it's nice to be able to have different programs uh, available, and, and Father Jerry has been wonderful at supporting all of those. Uh, please continue to give your time and talent. We saw with the Fall Festival how many people volunteered. That was fantastic. We love seeing that. Um, supporting CPC, again, we need those dollars. And what, something I forgot to mention earlier is that when you give to CPC, we have that assessment of 191000 If we collect more than that, 100% of that goes back to resurrection. Uh, if we don't collect that, then the rest of it has to come out of our budget. So uh, it's real important to support CPC. Um, and if providing consistent financial support is also important so that we can pay our bills each month and we have good cash flow. And then last and certainly not least is to continue to pray for the blessings on resurrection. Your prayers are very important to support our, our parish and our, our fellow parishioners and also our, our pastor. So thank you very much for your time. I know I went through that quickly. If there's anyone has questions on uh, the numbers or anything, let me know. I'm, I'll be happy to answer anything I can. But thank you so much for your time and thank you, Father Jerry. We would like to thank all the ministers who share their time and talents to assist our worship at Mass. Today, we want to bestow on them the blessing of God, who gives the gifts needed to carry out their work. And so first, we ask all of those who are readers to stand and receive a blessing. The word of God calls us out of darkness into the light of faith. With the confidence of God's children, let us ask the Lord to hear our prayers and to bless these readers. Let us pray. Everlasting God, when he read in the synagogue at Nazareth, your son proclaimed the good news of salvation for which he would give up his life. Bless these readers as they proclaim your words of life and strengthen their faith that they may read with conviction and boldness and put into practice what they read. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Next, we ask all servers, ushers, sacristans, musicians, and gift bearers to stand to receive your blessing. God provides the church with suitable ministers to assist in divine worship. Let us pray for these liturgical ministers that God may bless them as they undertake their new roles of service to this parish. Let us pray. God of glory, your beloved Son has shown us that true worship comes from humble and contrite hearts. Bless our brothers and sisters who have responded to the needs of our parish and visit to commit, them, and visit to commit themselves to your service as altar servers, sacristans, musicians, ushers, and gift bearers. Grant that their ministry may be fruitful and our worship pleasing in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lastly, we ask all extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion to stand to be commissioned and to receive a blessing.
dear friends in Christ, our brothers and sisters are to be entrusted with the administering the Eucharist, with taking communion to the sick, and with giving it as viaticum to the dying. In this ministry, you must be examples of Christian living in faith and conduct. You must strive to grow in holiness through this sacrament of unity and love. Remember that though many, we are one body because we share the one bread and one cup. As ministers of Holy Communion, be therefore especially observant of the Lord's commands to love your neighbor. For when he gave his body as food to his disciples, he said to them, This is my commandment, that you should live, love one another as I have loved you. And so I ask you, Eucharistic ministers, are you resolved to undertake the office of giving the body and blood of the Lord your brothers and sisters, and so serve to build up the church. If so, respond by saying, I am. Are you resolved to administer the Holy Eucharist with the utmost care and reverence? If so, please respond, I am. Your friends in Christ, let us pray with confidence to the Father. Let us ask him to bestow his blessings on our brothers and sisters chosen to be ministers of the Eucharist. Let us pray. Merciful Father, create and creator and guide of your family, bless our brothers and sisters. May they faithfully give the bread of life to your people, strengthened by this sacrament, May they come at last to the banquet of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would ask all of the rest of you to stand, please. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God's love and care for us, let us bring our prayers before him. For all members of the church, may God grant us open hearts to welcome the lost and receive them with love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, may God grant them courage in working for the common good rather than personal gain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those nearing the end of life, may God send his peace and enable them to receive his love through those who support them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may Jesus open our hearts to see others as God sees them and to love without judgment or criticism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for Hank Allen Mishler, who is being baptized this weekend. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mildred Rexon, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those intentions that we hold in the quiet of our hearts. Almighty and ever-loving God, we thank you for always hearing our prayers. Please answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory song will be number 337, 337, one bread, one body. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we so many throughout the earth. We Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Church. 
Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, ascending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and Christ, body of blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Union song will be number 326, number 326, I am the bread of life.
Jim Reardon has a minute for ministry this evening. Good evening. My name is Jim Reardon. I've been a parishioner here at Resurrection for most of my life, and thank you, Father Jerry, for allowing me to speak ever so briefly this evening. Pope Francis challenges us all to live the gospel more fully by reaching out to the poor. He states, there is an inseparable bond between our faith and the poor. May we never abandon them. Today, I would like to give you an opportunity to meet, the Pope, meet Pope Francis's challenge and form a bond between your faith and the poor children of Haiti. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Haiti is a third of the size of the state of Indiana. The state of Indiana has 6.6 .6 million people, while Haiti has 11 million, so it's a pretty crowded place. St. Joe in the County has long had a relationship with St. Jacques in Haiti. Many parishioners from other parishes in this area have sponsored students and visited St. Jacques. I've been eight times, and several of my family and friends have gone as well. Our school in St. Jacques has over 700 students between the elementary, high school, and colleges there in Haiti. Around 200 of those students we sponsor between the parishes here in Evansville. What sponsoring a student involves is pairing a student there at St. Jacques at Plain du Nord with a family here. For an elementary school and high school student, it's $360 annually, less than a dollar a day. That covers their tuition, a uniform, access to the medical clinic in case they get sick, vaccinations, and a meal a day while they're at school. Oftentimes, that's the only meal they get in a day's time. 100% of the sponsorship is used for that student. There's no administrative or management fees taken out. And when you sponsor a student, we ask that you try to continue sponsoring that student through their educational path, if at all possible. After high school, many of them would like to go to college, and that's managed on an individual basis. It is more expensive, usually around 1,500, but not all of them go to college. We also send a shipment over every spring, and we encourage you to send a letter with a family photo. They will treasure that photo, and they will pray for you daily. There's also mission trip opportunities. You can go meet your student and their family. There's a list in the back of church. You can sign up for more information for that as well. Our family chose to do this in 2007. We were sponsored a seventh grade boy. It's been a very rewarding experience to say the least and we're so fortunate, glad and blessed that we did that. So we have some packets in the back of church with the photo of 19 different students that are in need of sponsors. Please consider sponsoring a student. Should we fill those spots, we also have a program called Sewing Hope. That's a two year program for adults that gives them an opportunity to learn how to sew and use that skill to make money, support their family. That is $300 a year, and we have seven openings that we'd like to fill there as well. This is just not about meeting the educational and physical needs of these poor children. It is about giving them hope, hope for a future. Please consider being a part of that hope for the future for these students. Thank you very much. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Got a few announcements myself. Um, in the lobby after Mass, there are family quilt chances. Uh, please pick those up if you will. While you're there, take a minute to check out the quilts on display. These are the quilts that will be raffled off in 2023. Join us for trunk or treat in the lower parking lot after the 1030 Mass tomorrow morning. The event will be moved to the gym if the weather turns out to be bad. And this is a reminder that All Saints Day is this Tuesday, November 1st. It is a holy day of obligation. We will have Masses on October 31st at 6 p.m. on Monday and on Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. Tuesday. 
will Lord, look forward to seeing you on that holy day of obligation. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song will be number 460, 460, I Heard the Voice of Jesus. We'll sing the first two verses. <laughs>